Blessed is his name. You may be seated, please. So I have a question for you today. What, what if Eve had not taken the bite of the forbidden fruit? Now, don't think about that too long. Because even if she wouldn't have, you know one of the kids would have. I mean, you, you can't tell these kids anything. They always know better. Grace, peace, and mercy from God the Father, Jesus our Lord, and the Holy Spirit, our triune God. Join me in a word of prayer, please. Father, thank you for gathering your children here today. We give you praise, honor, and thanksgiving on this day and every day. Lord, today, open our hearts, open our minds, and let us see your word. Let us see your forgiveness today. We come in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, the very first law that God proclaims is you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's from Genesis 3.17. Now, he gave this law to Adam. Eve wasn't quite in the picture just yet. But eventually, surely she would know that this tree was there and that she knew she wasn't supposed to eat the fruit of it. In fact, she says, they could not even touch it. And if they did, they would die. But did Adam and Eve have any concept of death? After all, they had the tree of life that they could eat from and they could live forever. So what if she had said, not today, Satan, not today, well, this serpent, more crafty, more crafty than any of the other wild animals, he would have found someone else to tempt and eat this forbidden fruit. As for Adam and Eve, I wondered, had they ever met this serpent before? No. Well, then why in the world would they just believe whatever he said? The serpent basically says, listen to me and you'll get all the good things you really deserve. And of course, they fall for it. Even though they had the opportunity to go back to God and say, hey, we met this serpent guy and, and he said this. Was he right? Well, we know the rest of the story. Sin entered the world and nothing has ever been the same since that uh, perfect Garden of Eden. And all throughout the Old Testament, te temptations came and people fell and they paid the price for it. Looking at our Gospel for this week, Jesus' temptation in the wilderness was right after his baptism. Those 40 days must have been quite stressful. Fasting, probably not too much sleep. And here comes Satan offering everything he can. Which is what? Earthly, material, physical satisfaction? You can have it all. Just bow down and worship me. WWJD. What would Jesus do? Well, I think better yet, WDJD. What did Jesus do? He said, not only today, he said, not ever. Jesus used the Word of God to combat anything Satan presented to him. Now remember, Jesus had been out 
in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. He was fully human. He had to have been hungry. He had to have been tired. He had to have been ready to get back to other human contact. Jesus was tempted in every way. But He had to live this sinless life. He had to die a horrible death on a cross, but then rise victorious. That day, Satan met his match. He didn't win this round. And believe me, this was a heavyweight fight. Temptation is common to all human beings. You will be tempted one way or another. You can't run away from it. Or can you? Well, how about these timeless observations about temptation? Don't be surprised by temptation. Everyone is tempted. The only person that's not tempted is the person who's dead. So one, temptation is inevitable. It will come. Temptation is personal. Each one of us has a weakness that Satan knows about and he will exploit it. The book of James says, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. God cannot be tempted, nor does he tempt anyone. Later on, every good and perfect gift is from above. So, in the midst of all this evil that we're invited to participate in, the writer of Hebrews gives us this. We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Unfortunately, there are many Christians who use this grace that we are given to simply think that no matter what they do, what they say or think, doesn't matter because, hey, we're saved anyway. This is what's known as cheap grace. It costs us nothing. It's the grace we give ourselves. When does temptation rise to its highest level? Well, when you're most spiritually active. When you're drawing closer to God, that's when Satan will strike. You know, I had a conversation about this uh, several years ago at a conference uh, with fellow deacons from around the district. And there were about eight of us guys sitting around a table and we were discussing uh, uh, some stuff that was going on. And one of the guys started to, to confess that he was being tempted and was really having trouble resisting it. It was also at this time that he was going through extra training to become a specific, a, a specific ministry pastor, to be ordained into full-time ministry. All the guys at the table, every one of us stopped immediately what we were doing and prayed for him. Remember, Satan can't keep God from answering our prayers, but he will keep us from asking. Paul tells the church at Corinth and us today, but when you're tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. So our response to temptation is critical. Four things, and then we're done. 
Number one, prepare. Those who prepare to battle their enemies are capable opponents when attacked. Number two, know that temptation is always present. Don't ever be surprised by it. Know that you will be tempted. You will be tested. Number three, expect to pass the test. And take joy in it when you do. Even in those little victories, take joy. A positive and prayerful attitude is fundamental to success. And number four, the most important, pray. Pray in advance for God's help to show you the way to avoid falling into that temptation, into that sin that Satan is promoting to you. Stand firm. Be aware. Pray. And say to him, Not today, Satan. Not today. Amen.